In this video, I'll show you how to export Grasshopper Numbers slider animations to Lumion and D5. The method I'll cover can also be used with other programs that support FBX or Alembic animations, like Twinmotion, Keyshot, Blender, Cinema 4D, and Unreal Engine. We'll start by controlling geometry with simple sliders and showcase some more complex projects. First, let's install the necessary requirements. The first is the exporter plugin, and I'll include the download link in the description. After downloading the exporter plugin, you'll have a zip file. Right-click it, select Extract All, and choose your target folder, or simply leave it as the default, and press Extract. Now, you'll see a folder named Plugin Pack containing two files. To install, just drag and drop the Grasshopper script into your Grasshopper canvas, and set the Install toggle to True. Once installed, you'll see a success message in the panel. At this point, restart Rhino. After restarting, head over to the Plugin section, where you'll find a new plugin starting with the number 3. In this version, you have two components available, the Lumion Exporter and the He5 Exporter. The second is optional but helpful, Live Sync for your target program. For Lumion, open up the Package Manager, search for Lumion Live Sync, and press Install. For D5, go to the Workflow section, find the download icon, and install it from the folder. Once everything is installed, restart Rhino, and we're ready to go. Let's start with a simple animation where a box follows a curve while rotating along its own axis, and we'll export it to Lumion or D5. First, I'll draw NURBS curves in Rhino and reference it in Grasshopper, using a curve container. On this curve, I'll create a point that I can control with a number slider. I'll use the Evaluate Curve component, connect the curve to it, and reparametrize it so we can control it with a 0 to 1 time frame. This slider will define our animation timeline. As our timeline increases, this point will move along the curve. Next, let's create some geometry link to this point. I'll make a simple box about 2 meters in size as our starting shape. All units here will be interpreted as meters upon export. Any geometry we want to export must be converted to a mesh for the plugin to read correctly. So I'll use the simple mesh component and parent this mesh to our point using Orient. I'll connect the mesh to geometry input, use Centroid from the volume component as the source, and set our targeted point on the curve as the target plane. Now, when the timeline advances, the box will follow the path. For the plugin to recognize this slider as our timeline, select it, press Ctrl plus G to group, and rename it to Animate. Now, let's export this animation. First, I'll bring in the Lumion exporter from the previous installation section. Connect a panel to the out output to monitor the process. For the export setup, connect the original mesh before any transformations to the mesh input and the transformation matrix from the orient component to the transformation input. You may see a warning indicating that the run toggle needs to be set to true to initiate the export, but first, Let's go over the remaining inputs. The number of steps defines how many keyframes are exported. For example, if I want a 5 second animation at the default frame rate of 24 frames per second, I'll type 5 times 24 in the search bar, giving us 120 frames in total. Next is the total purge option, which deletes any temporary files used during the export. I'll set a toggle for this. Now that the setup is complete, Simply set the run toggle to true to start. If everything is configured correctly, you'll see progress in the output panel. Once baking is complete, you'll see the current time and a success message. To run the export again after making changes, just press the purge button. After a successful export, a new folder named Baked Animation will be created on your desktop. Inside, you'll find the baked FBX animation files in sequential order based on the current time and date. Next, Let's test the import into Lumion. Either open Lumion manually or use Rhino Live Sync. You can open an existing project or start by creating a new one. I'll start with a new project. Go to Imported Model, click Place, and select Import New Model. Navigate to the Baked Animation folder on your desktop. Select the latest FBX file. And make sure Import Animation is set to True before pressing Confirming. I'll place it at a random location. 
Then use the selection arrow to view the coordinates and set all XYZ values to zero, to aligning it with the world origin. Now we can see some animation, but it's hard to tell what path it follows. To visualize the box's movement along the path, let's import the curve as a pipe. Turn on Lumion Live Sync, and I'll create a pipe using the previous curve with a radius of 0.12. Now we can clearly see the path the box follows. This pipe is only for visual guidance and is not required for the plugin to work. I'll switch over to movie mode and record a new sequence. In Grasshopper, we set a 5 second animation for one complete cycle, so I'll set it to 5 seconds here as well. You can increase the duration beyond that, but it will loop. The example I showed you uses only one transformation. But what if you have a more complex animation? Let's make this box gradually scale up as it moves along the path. I'll add a scale component, using the centroid as the center of scaling. I'll link the timeline to control the scale factor, adding a small number to avoid a zero scaling error. Now, as the timeline advances, the box will scale up while moving along the path. To export this new animation, I'll merge both transformations and use Compound to create a single transformation matrix, and replacing the previous one. I'll then rebake this new animation. In Lumion, I'll delete the previous box and import the new baked animation. Select the latest file in sequential order. Follow the same steps to zero out the coordinates. And now we can see the box scaling up while moving. Let's try another animation, where the box rotates as it moves along the path. I'll remove the scaling setup and replace it with rotation, using the box's centroid as the pivot point. I'll set the angle in degrees, aiming for up to 5 revolutions, which totals 720 degrees. I'll use multiply our frame count by this value and set it as the rotation angle. After merging the new transformation, I'll rebake the animation. If the bake isn't complete, you can press the purge button. Let's see how the new animation turns out. I'll go back to Lumion, delete the previous version, and import the new one. Now, we can observe the rotation animation. Next, let's look at practical applications, such as animating a kinetic facade or other complex projects. I'm working on a project where the facade is designed in Grasshopper, and I want to export the animation. It opens and closes based on a point attractor, or can be controlled by radiation analysis. I have a slider set up, so that, as the slider value increases, the opening shifts. This single number slider controls everything. I use a non-destructive workflow, meaning the original geometry remains unchanged. Only transformations, such as scale, rotate, and move, are applied. Each transformation matrix is merged and combined using the compound component, as shown in the earlier example. To check if everything works as expected, you can use the transform component. Connect the unmodified mesh to geometry and the final transformation result to transformation. The result will show what you can expect after exporting. If there are any issues, you can adjust them here by visualizing with the transform component. Once you visualize the final animation, you're ready to export. I'll copy the exporter settings we configured earlier and paste them here. Connect the mesh input to the mesh and the final transformation result to the transformation matrix. Before completing, I'll use the purge component to clean up any temporary data from previous exercises to avoid conflicts. Purging before each new animation is a good practice. Depending on the complexity of your project, the export may take some time. The default batch size is 8, which means it uses 8 cores in parallel. I'll set it to the maximum available on my system, 32. Once the baking process is complete, you can check the output folder. 
I'll go back to Lumion, go to Imported Files, select Place, and Import New Model. Locate the new FBX file and import it. Ensure animation is turned on, then place it at a random location as before, and zero out the coordinates to align with the world origin. The script automatically applies one material to each strip. So, when you apply a texture to one module, it will apply to all. Now, if you want to add an additional animation on top of this one, for example, if you want another variation of the panels to rotate and also open and close, set up a new animation in Grasshopper, export it following the same steps, and return to Lumion. Click the Add Variation button, which allows you to import a new animation file. Select the New Exported Animation, make sure animation is enabled, and press OK. Now you'll have a new variation for the animation. You can add multiple variations without deleting the original. To switch between variations, simply click on these numbered buttons. Now let's look at another possible project you can create using this plugin. Here I have the Bun Finance Center where I control the vertical strips with number sliders and export it to Lumion. This is what it looks like after exporting. And here's a quick render of the animation. Next, let's see how to import these types of animations into D5. I'm going to use the previous kinetic facade animation for this showcase. Go to D5, create a new project or open an existing one. I'll start by creating a new project. I'll launch D5 Live Sync so that all static Rhino geometry will transfer directly to D5. For the Grasshopper part, we need to export it separately. I'll search for the D5 exporter from the previously installed plugin and copy all the parameters we set up earlier. I'll delete the previous exporter, connect the mesh to mesh, and the final transformation to the transformation matrix, then trigger baking. If it doesn't fully export and shows a message, simply press the purge button to clear previous files and rebake the animation. Once successfully exported, go to D5, select Import, and choose the new Alembic ABC file, then press Open. Once it loads, you can place it by clicking into the scene. For some reason, the scale may be very small, so I'll increase it by 100 by adding two zeros at the end of the size. To align it with the previous geometry, I'll set the X, Y, and Z coordinates to zero. I've added some effects to make it clearer. You can control the timeline in the animation section, but if you reverse it, there may be glitches. You also have control over the speed. If you want a longer animation, reduce the percentage, and if you want it to speed up, increase it to a maximum of 200%. I'll go to the animation section, add the current view, and adjust the animation length to 5 seconds to match our grasshopper export. You can increase or decrease it to loop or cut away. So that's all for this tutorial. You can apply the same animation techniques to your own projects. All project files used for this showcase, along with scripts and other exclusive content, are available on Patreon. If you're looking to learn more in Grasshopper, I've included playlists here with tutorials for intermediate to advanced users. Thanks for watching, 
and I'll see you in the next one.